In this lesson, we are going to discuss angles and their measure. Let us recall that if two rays are drawn with a common vertex, then they form an angle. These are two rays and this is your angle. So this is your initial side and this is your terminal side. This angle over here from the initial side going to the terminal side, that will be the angle that we will be considering. An angle is said to be in standard position if its vertex is at the origin of a rectangular coordinate system and its initial side coincides with a positive x-axis. So these are examples of angles in standard position. The initial side is always on the positive x-axis. If the rotation is in the counterclockwise direction, the angle is positive. If the rotation is clockwise, the angle is negative. So in this example, your angle is going counterclockwise. So therefore, this is a positive angle. Whereas here, it's going clockwise. So therefore, this is a negative angle. If the terminal side of an angle in standard position lies in a quadrant, we say that the angle lies in that quadrant. So for example, this angle here lies in quadrant 2 because the terminal side lies here. Let us recall this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this angle lies in quadrant 2. Here, this angle lies in quadrant 4. If the terminal side lie on the x or the y axis, we say that the angle is a quadrantal angle. So for example, here, this is our terminal side and it lies on the negative y axis. So therefore, it doesn't belong to any quadrant. We just say that this is a quadrantal angle. There are two units of measurement for angles. The first one is degrees. One revolution is equal to 360 degrees. So this angle here has a measure of 360 degrees. In this case, take note that this is a right angle. So it has a measure of 90 degrees because it is a quarter of a revolution. So that's why it's 360 over 4. In this case, this angle has a measure of 180 degrees degrees because it is just half of a revolution. The second unit of measurement for angles are radians. If the radius of a circle is r and the length of the arc subtended by the central angle is also r, then the measure of that angle is 1 radian. So for example here, you have a radius of r and this is your central angle. We say that we have a central angle if the vertex of the angle lies on the center. If this length here has a length of r units, then the angle here is equal to 1 radian. For example, in this circle, the radius is 3 and this length is also 3 units. So we now say that this angle has a measure of 1 radian. Suppose that I have here a circle of radius 1. What would be the circumference of this circle? Recall that the circumference, that is the length of this arc, is given by 2 pi r. But since our radius here is equal to 1, it's just equal to 2 pi. So the length of this entire circle is 2 pi. And that is 1 revolution. So therefore, this gives us the relationship between radians and degrees. Since 1 revolution is equal to 360 degrees and it's also equal to 2 pi, if we look at this equation here, we can divide both sides by 2 and therefore we get that 180 degrees is equal to pi. So we will be using this to convert from one angle measure to another. Now from here, take note that this means that pi over 180 is equal to 1 and also 180 degrees over pi is equal to 
one because these two are just equal. To convert from degrees to radians, we will simply multiply it by... We want to get rid of degrees here, so we should have degrees on the denominator and radians on the numerator. Take note that I no longer write radians. If it doesn't have any unit, it automatically means radians. 225 and 180 are both divisible by 5, so therefore this becomes 45 and 36. So let me just write that here, 45 pi over 36. But this is still divisible by 9. So therefore, this becomes 5 and 4. So our answer is 5 pi over 4. Next is 310 degrees. Again, we multiply it by pi over 180 degrees. So that's why the degrees will get cancelled out. Both are divisible by 10, so this becomes 31 over 18 pi. This is already in simplest form. This one, 20 degrees, multiplied by pi over 180, we get 2 pi over 18 because 20 and 180 are divisible by 10. So therefore, this is pi over Nine. And lastly, 315 degrees, multiply again by pi over 180 degrees. 315 and 180 are divisible by 5. This becomes 63. This becomes 36. But 63 and 36 are both divisible by 9, so therefore... This is 7 pi over 4. Next, let us convert the following to degrees. Take note that we will now multiply this. We want to end up with degrees. So we want to have radians on the denominator and degrees on the numerator. So that's why this is now 180 over pi. Again, we are not changing the original expression because this thing over here is equal to 1. So pi gets cancelled out. This is 30. So 30 times 5, we get 150 degrees. 2 pi over 9, again, we will multiply by 180 degrees over pi. Pi gets cancelled out. 180 over 9 is 20 times 2, we get 40 degrees. And lastly, 12 pi over 5 will give us 180 over 5 is 36. So we're left with 36 times 12. So therefore, that is 432 degrees. So notice that this means that you already exceeded one revolution.